Uh, Madam Chairman, uh, fellow citizens of Gloucester, I really miss all the uh, fishermen at this uh, city hall. I really miss them. Could you just give your name and address for the record, please? My name is Vincent Farini. I live at 126 East Main Street. I pass by day and night, no one has seen me. If you ever want to find me and know me, leave behind yourself and enter the caves of other people. There you will find me who is yourself. We live in a schizoid society, heart split from head. And what I want to do all through my life, which I have been doing all through my life, is to show that there is no disunity, that I'm a unified self. Being a unified self, I'm the poem, I'm the work of art, I'm the art of living. There's no separation. Once you understand that there's no separation, then uh, you realize that the uh, the living process is the art itself. So when you're in touch with that, you're where you want to be. I am thrust out of my mother's womb with pencil in my left hand, intoxicated with all these visions before and behind coming at me, all in the palm of my right fist, my working hand. I don't take anything for granted and never will. The tenement I am born in has a placard, worn out, torn, weather-beaten like the clabbards, but the writing is still legible. When will the long feud end? The ink of the letters has come from the marrow of my parents and from all families in poverty throughout the ages, whether of the body or spirit. A voice out of this chaos booms out. You are going to conform, you little bastard, or we are going to make your life miserable. You cannot disentangle Lloyd Vincent from his writing. The poem is his day's work. That day's poem is that day's work. For that day, that poem is Vincent Farini. You can't separate the two, and it's a terrible mistake to separate the two. You're losing. The poem and Vincent are both losing if you try to separate them. It is possible to take a lot of Vincent's uh, poems by standard uh, academic procedures and pick all sorts of holes in them. That is completely missing the point of someone like Vincent. When you open a volume of Vincent's poems and read in them, uh, you're dealing with Vincent the Man on every single page. This house is holier than a temple. It is where I live and have my being. This house of bone and blood, molded by the weathers of experience, is all I have. This house, after this house, which is me only, is dust, I will be in your house. To, to give your life over to poetry the way, the way Vincent has, without, with no thought whatsoever of material gain, with, with, uh, with, with, with very little uh, uh, concern about, about, about fame, uh, simply uh, 
simply publishing uh, his works uh, when he couldn't uh, by himself when he couldn't find publishers continuing writing uh, uh, long after in age uh, most people uh, would have given up uh, writing I think it's a, it's tremendous it's a tremendous thing in the community I mean when I was 14 or 15 or 16 when I was reading Vincent I was looking for a way to express things that were inside me that 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 couldn't come out uh, the poetry that we read in school, Wordsworth, uh, Longfellow, it, it, it was meaningless to me. And so when I read Vincent's poetry that was sharp uh, and, and the imagery was tough, it was, it was stunning, it was a tremendous experience. The factories, sunsets splash blood in our broken eyes and the moon splinters. Dead, we are huge and ugly with derelict canyons between. Our floors empty as Sunday, abandoned by the bosses and a few abusing us. Our skeleton teeth locked on the sky. Workers, it is not our fault you starve, idle without purpose. Workers, resurrect us. Put life back into our hollow bodies. Let us breathe again, and the word fired be a nightmare that died with the past, and for the first time own your jobs. The union to operate us for the good of the people and the prophets divided among you to build a city of love. When I was a child, I uh, witnessed a lot of poverty. Uh, my parents were on welfare and I had to go to get the, the food they offered and uh, I had a see quarrels between my parents. Uh, it was a very difficult time. And uh, as I grew uh, older and I went to school, I uh, found myself uh, uh, not at ease with school. I kind of hated school. Uh, they didn't tell me things that uh, were dealing with my life. School was a bore because uh, they told us uh, that we had to read such and such a, a book and then we had to report on the book. Well, I mean, to report on what was in the book was kind of ridiculous. And so we wanted to tell our stories, but the teacher said, your stories are not important. You gotta get the story from the book and tell it to us. I says, I'm not interested in reading a story from the book and giving it to you back. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's secondhand stuff. You gotta hear the stories we're gonna tell you. And they said, no. The teacher said, nothing doing. We're not interested in your stories. I said, well, you can take the school and stick it up your ass. And that was it, man. Sunday, I swim the whole length of the beach, four miles. I accost this girl in the ocean over our heads. We shed our trunks. Ah, the cunt. It is as rubbery as the salt brine. I feel like kelp. I discover the healing properties here. Immortality is in the ocean. The cells in my body crave the sex of it and the deeps of my unfound mind. In 17, I was still in school. I went to the Lynn Public Library. When I stepped in that building, and I saw all the books around there, wow, I says, my God, all the stuff that's in here, all the words telling us so many things about life. I says, maybe I'm going to find the answers why there's poverty in America, why we don't get along. So I became a bookworm.